you are new here, we go live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and on Facebook. And we simulcast on Facebook on my La Vintage Decor page and also workshops at La Vintage Decor. So um, we have three projects we're going to work on tonight. And they're all upcycled projects. So um, the first one is a picnic basket. It's Yogi Bear, a picnic basket. I already started this one. I kind of dry brushed it with some black paint because we're going to put a stencil on here. I don't know if you saw my Saturday video where I did three quick flips and I used a um, stencil. Uh, a grain sack stencil from JRV Stencils and one of our um, Bells and Whistles silk screen stencils. I did these three farmhouse pieces and they all sold this week. So I figure I've had this picnic basket around forever. So we're going to try the same treatment on it because the inside of it is really cute. It's this red gingham. So I think it'll go really well with the little farmhouse decor. So before, the, the uh, finish on it was just a regular pale wood finish. So I just gave it a little bit of a finish, uh, dry brushing it with caviar paint. And because the wood was so dry, um, and I'm just using a dry brush, dry brush meaning I didn't have a lot of paint on it, I also used a mister to kind of help spread the paint around a little bit. So that's project number one, and we're going to set it aside for a minute and come back to it. And then project number two, we're going to make a little key rack out of an old, um, this is a baseboard. And also, this is a section of a lampshade. I recall this being like kind of six or eight sided. But I always loved it, and it is so old and falling apart, but I just want to preserve it. So it's going to become part of this, and I have some old hooks, and we'll do a stencil on here that says keys. So we'll just do um, a couple things on here and revive it. And let's see. The third project is probably the most ambitious one but it is a cabinet door. Now, lots of times I will use these cabinet doors and I'll um, make them sample boards for customers. So, you know, I show them colors, show them glazes and that type of thing. So I sanded down where there was a raised area with paint. And so we're going to use a bunch of uh, molds on this one and we're going to blend some paint. We're going to blend some silk paint. Remember last week when I got this beautiful desert rose color and worked on that project? Well, this was the color I actually meant to grab, morning sunrise. So we're going to work with the two of those colors. So I think the first thing that we should do in order to get everything done, or try to anyway, is work on this. This is the uh, little key project. I just kind of want to get this started and out of the way. So I'll put the screen down. And if you come on and say hi, um, hopefully I'll see your comments when the screen is pointed down. Okay, I flipped my screen around. <laughs> See, we're looking at my china closet there. Okay, so I'm going to just figure out where I want this. And, you know, anywhere is good. Um, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off because, as you see, this is like it was where it was put together. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to make it a little bit flatter. But because it's so heavy, this was done on like a canvas. I'm just going to go ahead and cut all those edges off. So this was sort of a canvas, um, so it's really heavy. So it's gonna, we're gonna require a little bit more than regular um, sealer for decoupage, which reminds me, I don't think I brought sealer home with me. So this will be one of those projects I finish later for you. 
But, um, yeah, because I remembered I didn't bring the drill home either. So I want this um, ledge down at the bottom because I'll show you why because I have a couple different key options or hook options to put on there. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of cut across the top this way on here just to make this fit in here. Okay, so I don't even want to paint this board. I just love the way it has patinaed over time. Um, I just think it's really pretty and it really goes in with the tones that are in this little lampshade. I know there's glare on there. Um, but what we're going to do first is take some tacky glue and we're going to really put a lot of it on the back of this. I think. <laughs> I may have to take the lid off. Here it comes. Good old thick tacky glue. Aileen's tacky glue dries pretty fast. And I just want to kind of spread it out a little bit as best I can. I'm just going to leave this glue on its side because we're going to be using it for some other projects. I'm just going to take this little piece that I cut off and sort of use it as a spreader. I want to get it uh, out to the edges because I really want this to stick. I have some clamps with me to hold it down while it dries. See, I thought about that, but I didn't think to bring the sealer home. Oh well. See how old that is? It's just kind of brittle. So. I'm working on my Saturday project, my dupe. Um, so I'm doing an anthropology uh, dresser, or a, you know, that's my inspiration. And oh, I had my hands are such a mess because I've had glue and um, mud <laughs> all over them. So, okay, so I have this face in me, but I'll turn it around to you in a minute here. I have some paper towels here. Okay, that is just the the binding, so we can get rid of that. A little crooked here. All right, I might not even need those clamps. I thought it was gonna be hard to hold down, but it seems to be, uh, I got a really good coat of glue on there, so it seems to be sticking. We might not even need to um, do the traditional decoupage. I think I'd like to seal it, but, um, so that's what we have so far. Yeah, I think it probably would look better if we put a sealer on it, but um, but we can catch up with that later, because we, we do have some other parts uh, to do on this. So, let me put my cupboard door down here. So I have this stencil, and this is from Etsy. Um, so this is just kind of an old, old thing here. And, you know, I could have done some of this on here before we put that on. Um, but mainly I wanted it for the word keys and to decoupage one of the, or not decoupage, but stencil one of the keys on. So um, we have a couple different colors here and we have a really pretty pink and corally color. So I'm gonna use this desert rose here. 
This was not part of my plan, but you know what? It always works out better whenever you go off course. <laughs> At least for me sometimes with projects. Okay, so that lid there, that's plenty of paint to do this stencil. So I'm going to grab one of my brushes here. I'll set that on there. So I hope you guys are doing well this evening. So I'm getting super excited to very soon make an announcement about where we are moving. We've been keeping it a big secret. <laughs> okay, so I'm just getting some paint on there and then taking most of it back off, just offloading that paint. Okay, and I'm just gonna, like I said, this wasn't part of the plan. But that's all right. We're just going to we're going to vary the plan a little bit. And I'm just going to use a stippling motion. And just stencil this pretty design on here. I think I used this stencil one other time on a desk. And I think it was blue. It was really pretty. Yeah, I can see the blue paint on the stencil. <laughs> so you can get your stencils anywhere. Um, craft stores and like I said, this one I believe I got from Wish. This is just going to be a little touch that just just adds a little interest, I think. There was already some paint on here, and that's another thing that adds some interest because it gives it that vintage chippy look. We didn't even have to do anything to achieve it. <laughs> so I have water here, so I'm going to throw my brushes in water right away. Get rid of that. And I'll show you so far what we've got. You can't see it real well, but it's going to be one of those subtle things. Okay, so it just uh, kind of picks up on the, the pink in those flowers there. I'm going to give it a minute here. As a matter of fact, I usually stencils don't... Uh, look, at, look, I have cornstarch on me. <laughs> I'll explain why in a minute. I'm just going to turn this on a minute and just to make sure this is dry. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to use... I don't want the word vintage, because that, to me, I don't know, it's just dumb. Vintage keys. I just <laughs> I just like the keys word. And we're just going to put that on there and uh, stencil maybe both of those keys. And I'm going to use uh, my caviar color. Get that stencil brush again that I put in the water. So I want to make sure I dry it off really well. Feel free to say hi or ask any questions. So I'm not going to use tape. I'm just going to hold this on here because it's just such a little project. But again, I'm going to offload most of that paint. I just want to be careful I don't hit any of that word vintage. This would also look pretty um, if I used a metallic with this. Hindsight, you know, <laughs> didn't think of that earlier. But I think you'll like what we do with this because it's kind of got a cool vibe to it. And here the game plan for me is, you know, we're moving. 
So I am trying to bring up all these pieces of wood and all these parts of things just so that I can put them out and sell them real quick. <laughs> so that's what we've got so far. Um, I didn't get any of the word vintage and I kind of like the way the word keys is just kind of almost looks kind of typewritten or haphazard. <laughs> Um, so I want to show you what I brought home. Now, here's the other thing. I forgot my drill. So I'm going to have to finish this part tomorrow and post my pictures as I often do on Instagram and on the community page on, um, YouTube. So this was part of a window and it'll never be used for a window again. But I'm just going to put it down here, and that'll be a cute little key holder. And then the other one, I'll just put somewhere along here. And again, that'll be something that will be, you know, another hook that you could hang your dog's leash or whatever. But I'll just hold it up here. But I think it's going to be kind of cute. And this is totally vintage with chippy paint and everything on it so um really literally just dug out uh, off of off of old doors and windows so total salvage here so that's going to be what this project looks like so we're close to being done with that one so i'm going to set that aside and then i'm going to revisit this um picnic basket here so like I said, everybody was like really enjoying the uh, stencil that I put on the uh, stool and the grain sack that I did. So I'm going to do the same thing. You know what they say when it's a success. Hey Kathleen, how you doing? <laughs> that, uh, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. So this might be a little difficult for you to see, but um, so the silk screen stencils are sticky and they have a screen through there so how i um uh, i'm gonna stand up a minute so the way i um did before and offloaded most of the paint is going to be totally different now now i'm going to set this aside a minute because i just realized my my paint is sitting here open and I don't want a, an accident here. So we're, we're done with the caviar. I'm going to use some um, sawmill gravy and then we're going to be using some barn red. So um, let me get my stencil brush here. I must have put it back in the water. I did. Okay, just kind of wipe this off a little bit. I have one that's kind of soapy and one that's kind of a rinse. So hopefully I'll get most of the, the black paint off of that. Okay, so let's put this back up here. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do this in the air. So we're using a generous amount of paint on here because we're working it through that screen so totally different than a regular stencil if you hear a dog barking <laughs> it's my neighbors like their dog we have a vacant lot on this side but on this side our neighbors are kind of close relatively close and they have um, a couple dogs and their dogs don't like me making noise in the dining room when they're outside. <laughs> so that's what you hear. My little dog, you should see. He looks really cute. He is uh, nestled between pillows. He's, he's laying on top of one and he's got the other one on top of his head. <laughs> I'm going to take a look just to make sure I've got this covered. And I kind of missed the side of the F there. Okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and peel this off. Are you ready? Nice. Came out pretty good. Okay, so that's that one. And these just wash off. You can use them about 10 times. So um, you just wash them and then you put the sticky side up and then you put it back on the, the paper it came on. So I will wash mine later. I always make a crazy mess whenever I do these projects. And I'm gonna dry this off a little bit because I'm gonna put another stencil on here. set it aside for a second so I close this paint again yeah but all three pieces if you saw it on my Instagram or if you saw the YouTube video of my um, of the stools that I did last week the stools and the chairs like I said they sold first thing Tuesday morning when we opened so um, we are having big sales in the store right now so Okay, so this is the JRV grain sack stencil. This is one. There's, uh, I think, three in the package. So um, I'm going to put this back up here. Well, let me get my brush ready first. <laughs> this little brush I keep washing. and But I had picked these stencil brushes up at Michael's, and I really like them. At first, I thought they were a weird shape. I didn't know... Um, whether I would like an oval stencil brush, but I really do. So I might pick some more of those up. Okay, don't have any more paint on there. All right, so I'm going to put this up here again. So I'm just going to run this. What do you think? I think I should run it up and down. Or across I kind of think up and down so let me get it in position here okay this one it's gonna be difficult for me to kind of do this without looking at it so I'm offloading most of the paint unlike the uh, silkscreen stencil where you want uh, that paint on there but okay so I'm gonna just get real close up against that but not completely and again I'm just using a stippling motion just not using very much paint with this it looks like I am because it's all on the stencil okay trying to do this so you can see it sorry uh, <laughs> I know you were able to see that side but this side I can't see what I'm doing so so voila I'll lift that up and then I'll show you there so that's all there is to that I'm glad I went uh, in that direction with the the grain sack stencil so you know you can easily achieve this with tape too but if you notice on here there's two lines on either side of the big one so that would you know even though it's a, not a whole lot it still would be time consuming uh, to tape that off so this was super quick right so that's another project down now I'll probably end up waxing this just so that the uh, so it has it's nice and sealed so okay well we're moving right along with our projects so here comes the big one 
Um, yes, Kathleen, I am going to use these molds. That's what's coming up next. Um, so what we're going to do, so we have this old cabinet door. Like I said, I use these a lot um, whenever I am showing a client what a finish is going to look like. I'm trying to get all this stuff out of the way. I'm definitely going to need that. I'm going to need some paint. And my neighbor dogs can quit yelling, quit barking. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set this on here. And I don't want to smush my molds. I did a bunch of molds before we started, uh, but we'll do a couple more here. Because I think what I want to do is make this um, like the kind of sign that you put on your porch that just stands and spell out spring. So we'll put some molds down at the bottom and along the sides. So I think that's kind of uh, where I want to go with this and maybe a little bit up at the top. So put it back down and I'll end up filling these um, with the, the clay. So this is what's left of my Crayola air dry clay. So I discovered this stuff um, I will tell you that I've used, so I don't sell any of these molds anymore, so I can be totally frank about it, um, but there's, these two are redesigned with Prima, and I love these molds, I have nothing against these molds. I used cornstarch inside them to help it release, that's what is on my shirt, um, but uh, when, when you use redesign with Prima modeling material, you don't have to use cornstarch. It just releases beautifully. Um, but when you use any other kind of clay, in my experience, either IOD or um, the DOS clay, you kind of have to use the baking soda in these molds to get a good release. So we are going to do a couple molds, but I'm just going to go ahead and get started to get some of them on here. So some of the ones that we have made because they're kind of in my way. So just gonna get this tacky glue out here and we're gonna put our molds on first and then we're gonna paint. So um, there's different things that you can use to make molds with. A lot of times I use amazing casting resin, um, the two part epoxy, I do that a good bit, but um, Tonight, I just thought it would be nice to do this with the air dry clay. Now, sometimes your air dry clay will crack, and that's okay. I am totally okay with that. It sort of lends itself to sort of a vintage look. So, you always want to make sure you get your glue pretty much the whole way to the edges on these so that you don't have any gaps. Okay, that one kind of fell apart, but that's okay. We're just gluing it back together. I'll start with these ones that have stems. I just love making good old gluey messes. <laughs> Like I said, I was kind of in the glue all day today, the glue and the mud for my dupe. Anxious for you to see it. So just so you know, in our store, we are selling a lot of furniture so we don't have to move it. But we will have some additional furniture coming out because of the the pieces that I produce for my videos and I still have some furniture hidden in the recesses of the building which needs to come out and get painted and sold so we don't have to move it okay um, okay I think I'm gonna, I don't 
how I want to do this. Maybe I'll save some of those for up here because I have some. Um, let me get this out of the way here a second. I'm going to move this down so you can see up here on this corner. So I have you know the cabinet, the holes for the hardware. So we're going to disguise that. I definitely want more down at the bottom, but I just going to move up here a second and and take care of this area. I love these. Look at this rose. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so let's get some glue on there. You definitely get more detail with the two-part epoxy. You can also use hot glue in these molds. They're silicone, so it's not going to stick. I've done that before. You just have to have um, high temp glue, I think, at least I think, and the big fat sticks because it just takes forever otherwise. Kind of have to have a better quality glue gun too. Again, because it takes forever. All right, so we'll get this rose up here in the corner. And we can kind of bend that clay down so it just kind of conforms to this. Okay, and let's give that a leaf. Speaking of roses, I have some gorgeous roses here that my husband sent me for Valentine's. I had them in the shop all week, and then I did the... Uh, the bridal show, the wedding show at the U.S. Hotel on Sunday. And I thought, well, I'll take them with me and then I'll just take them home for the weekend. So I did. And they just keep getting bigger and more beautiful every day. Can't use silicone. Your mom is allergic to silicone. Ah, I'm sorry about that. I wonder though if you um, if you just did the if you had the mold in a different place and did it if you'd be okay because I don't think that would um, I mean the none of the material that you're using inside it is silicone so I don't know but to keep them in the house maybe might not be safe oh my hmm. She said her lips swell up. Can't take any chances. All right, so I'm just putting another flower on here. This is like a Looks like a daisy, I guess. I'm so excited for spring to come and flowers. We had that gorgeous 60 degree day yesterday. It was kind of warm today too, but it, it rained. Here's another really pretty flower. Oh, okay. Well, maybe sometime you get to have some fun with some molds. Okay, I like that leaf there. Generally, I like to do things in odd numbers, so I'll probably end up adding something else to this corner. So I just think that's more pleasing to the eye. So threes, fives, not usually even numbers. Okay, but we're getting, we've got our hardware holes all filled now. Okay, I think I'm going to take one of these rose buds and have it coming down that way. 
Well, I just knocked the, <laughs> the stem off, but again, we're gluing it on there so we can glue it in place. There we go. No one's any the wiser. Don't tell anyone, okay? I may put the blow dryer on here to blow away all this stuff before we start painting. So when you put these molds on, um, usually... I start painting right away because I let the whole thing all dry together. I love the detail in these. Yes, you could do it at your house and just keep the molds away from her. <laughs> but I think once they're, you know, molded, you'd be fine. Fingers are sticking together. <laughs> I can't wait to start painting because I want to kind of do sort of a uh, almost like a watercolor blend. I have blended with silk a few times and I think it blends just amazing. And usually when I blend with uh, chalk mineral paint, I use a spray spray bottle um, but you really don't have to with the silk as a matter of fact they don't recommend it but oh these flowers are gorgeous so i'm just gonna i guess you can't see i'm gonna kind of do what i did before and just kind of put push that around to conform to the the molding on the cabinet door Little hole in this mold, no big deal. So this is supposed to be a stem and a bud too. Hmm. Where do I want to do this? Maybe up from here. Yeah, let's do that. Almost done with the molds and we'll do one, we'll uh, make a mold just so you can see how it's done in case you haven't. Pretty sure most of you have. Again, you want to press those edges down as much as possible so that it makes contact. Okay. Um, let's see. Where do I want this leaf? Maybe there, and maybe I won't do any more molds. I kind of like the way it looks, because we have some down here, some up here. I guess we could do one little thing up in the corner up here, maybe. Uh, sometimes I like the off uh, symmetry here. <laughs> But I kind of did, kind of blew that already, so <laughs> I might as well just keep going. 
We'll make one more mold. We'll make a rose and a leaf for up in the other corner. And then we'll knock it off for making molds. Okay, I'm gonna spritz my hand a little bit just to get some of that glue off my hands and the clay because it, it dries real fast and it's sort of with the glue it sort of makes it kind of sticky and kind of kind of dries real fast so I, I always love having a sprayer bottle around for my projects and also for my hands <laughs> and also if I spill paint on the floor it's like my emergency oh I forgot to glue this one down it's like my emergency uh You know just to get the paint moving so that it doesn't set in i just start spraying it with the water and, then, and hope for the best so now after i get the glue off my fingers i'm putting it on again but that's okay like i said i kind of had all day with gluey fingers okay these are both attached it's such a pretty flower. I guess you cannot see Facebook. All right, so that's what the bottom looks like so far. And that's what we have so far in the top. And I'm going to do... I'm going to make a rose and um, a leaf for the, this corner. Yes, <laughs> fingers are your best tools. That's true. First ones that you're given. Okay, so we're just going to use this. And I am going to dust it again with the cornstarch. You can use a brush to do this, but I didn't have any dry brushes. So I'm just... You know, I like this leaf better it looks to me more like a rose leaf so all right so my clay is almost gone so you just put it in your hand and warm it up a little bit and I always like to kind of conform it to almost the shape that I'm going to be putting in the mold. It kind of saves you a little bit of work. So we already know we have a lot of extra. We'll get rid of that right away. And that's what you do. You just kind of push the the clay down in and then you push the excess away and then you start to push the clay back in the mold so that you can see it lift just a little bit from the sides at least this is my method anyway You want to make sure that you have the back of it flat. Otherwise, um, on your project, it might not lay flat. And it doesn't have to be perfect, because so we conformed it. But look how pretty that turns out. So I had a little excess. So you can just pull that excess away. But look how beautiful. You see the detail in there? There we go. Um, okay, let's get our leaf done. If you're doing a stem or something, you can kind of make like a little stick and put it in. It is beautiful. I think so, too.
So after the video's over, I'll put the link in the description box for um, the Dixie Bell products. The paints, essentially, that I'm using tonight. Okay, so now I'm going to start pushing the clay back in. So we have a lot of excess clay over here we can get rid of. In here. Okay, it wasn't hard to coax that one out of the mold. And again, we have a lot of detail in there. All right, so we can set these molds aside. I am going to need that because I want to fill in those little holes. Okay. So we're just going to do... I have a lot of cornstarch on there. I think it will dissipate with the, the paint. All right, so a rose in the corner. I think we'll make this leaf go down. All right. So that's what we have on the top and here on the bottom. Okay, so before we start painting, I'm just going to take a little bit of this clay and hopefully this will work. <laughs> if not, I can, I can do something else with it later, but I have to kind of look what I'm doing here. But I just want to kind of fill this this hole we have here, this may not work. I don't want to lay it down on the, the side with the molds, but. Okay, I'm just have it in there. I'm just trying to get rid of the excess. I think it might work. Just trying to smooth it. I don't need to worry so much about what the back looks like, but that's that filled up that hole. And let me get the other one. And then we can start painting. <laughs> my favorite part especially since I've been dying to paint with that color so I uh, would never usually open a big jar of paint like that for a little project I try to finish up uh, jars but I know I'm going to be painting a dresser in it so I thought, well, I'll just crack it open for this project. Uh-oh, I just lost my rose. 
let me hurry up with this and <laughs> get my rose again. Okay. Okay, you'll be fine. I'm talking to my rose. Oh no, it's for the shop, yes. Like I said, I'm trying to sell as much as I can because we're going to be moving. Okay, so let me find the lid to my glue, put my lids on everything, and get to painting here. Because I still want to do a little stencil in the middle. I have some letter stencils and spell spring. Because I think this would be a cool piece uh, that you could put on your front door. We'll put a hanger on it. Or you could, like, prop it in the corner of your porch. Okay. I'm going to try seeing if I can... There, I was trying to clear the deck there and uh, blow off all the all the stuff. Okay, let's see what brush I'm gonna use. Okay, I know I want. I brought a great big brush for blending. This is the best dang brush. And then I brought a little one because I'm going to be using that on the leaves. But I'm going to try to do like a watercolor effect. So I'm going to get the big brush that I used when I uh, painted the picnic basket. And a lot of the paint I'm going to be... Um, Kind of mix it together so I may use this brush for a couple different colors all right oh I need to mist my hands again sorry <laughs> I'm just way too sticky Okay, let's go. All right, so first I'm gonna use Morning Sunshine. Is that what it is? Morning Sunrise. Okay, so I think my plan is that I'm gonna kind of start that in the middle and then all around and then just kind of do the flowers in the pink and the green and just kind of blend them all together a little bit. So I'm using the silk, which has a built-in primer and sealer. So after we paint this, that's all we need to do to this piece. color is really yummy. Now, I'm not worrying if I get any of the paint on my flowers because I kind of want a, a mushroom color. It's really more kind of lilac. Uh, it, it's uh, yeah, kind of Pinky lilac -y. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do a little more around the edges with this. You keep it on the paper and I'll get it on my tablecloth. Because I kind of want this to be the main color, but I'm going to be um, putting color on these flowers and then blending it in. 
originally I was picturing sort of a half and half thing to blend, but then I just kind of decided I'd prefer to do it this way. And that is a woman's prerogative, right? To change your mind. That's what I always say anyway. <laughs> It's an old saying, works works for other people, so it works for me. Because I do it all the time. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take the Desert Rose. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Kathleen says. This is a really pretty color, too. I just set that down on something. Okay, so... You know, I am going to do that. Um, I'm just going to wipe my brush off a little bit. And I'm going to double dip. <laughs> a lot of people don't recommend you do that because you're kind of contaminating the paint. But it's my paint, so I'm okay with it. And I am going to use that big brush to kind of blend the colors together a little bit. Um, I don't know whether you guys on Facebook can see right now. Okay, and I am going to dip back into my, uh, whatever it's called, <laughs> sunrise, my morning, I need to get that right, morning sunrise, yeah, and get a little more of that around here, and then I'm going to, I also have, um, this is Hampton Olive, and I'm going to dip in and color my leaves. And I'm going to try using a dry brush, um, my blending brush. I might missed it. I know that typically you don't with with silk with the um, all-in-one mineral paint, but you know I've broken the rules on many occasions, and I've also seen other people do it. So it's not like anything happens to it. I think the idea is that it just kind of, um, for the sake of the um, sealer part of it, you don't want to break any of that down, but I think maybe I'll miss my brush a little. So I'm just ever so lightly going around where I have two different colors. And just kind of blending it in because I kind of want this to look a little watercolory. It's okay if I get pink on my leaf, and it's also okay if I get green on my flower. Because there are tints in nature, you'll find that um, you'll find that there's green in your petals and also pink in your leaves. Now, I hope this is looking good. Sometimes it's hard to tell in here because I have those bright lights on so that you guys can see. 
And the thing is, I can't always see it right. <laughs> and I'm the one that's supposed to see it. Okay, I'm going to shift this on down this way and work on this end a little bit. And like the, like I said, ever so lightly with the the brush because not only is it a huge brush, so you want a soft brush, first of all, because these um, molds aren't completely set, so you don't want to get rid of your detail in the molds. Okay, um, okay, I'm going to come back in a little bit with a little more of this Hampton Olive and just kind of the centers of the flowers and hit the tops of the leaves again. And I guess you can't see. And also like the base of the buds. Okay. See how soft and subtle that looks? Okay, I'm going to let that go because, like I said, I can't really see completely where I might need to touch up a little bit. So that's why always the morning light is always great for me to, uh, to see <laughs> where I might have missed and just kind of finish things up. But I am going to use the hairdryer on this and then we're going to put the stencil on. We're a little over an hour, so um, I don't usually like to go that long, but we're gonna we're gonna get this uh, this word spring on here. Now another thing that might look really cool on here is white wax. That makes details pop in these things too. And that's it's upside down, but anyway, that's what the top looks like. Okay, let me get the lid on the Hampton Olive here. And then we'll have to pick out our letters. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Kathleen said it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so what little hint right on your stencils. So keep them, I try to organize them in alphabetical order whenever I can, but it's a lot easier if you take a Sharpie and write on them. Uh, but these are JRV stencils or Jamie Ray Vintage. And I can put the link for these in the, description box too. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I guess we have numbers too. Like nine? Everything but the ones I want. 
They are in alphabetic. Oh, that's a and oh, that's a U. <laughs> Not sprung, spring. We want okay R. And they're sticking together. Um, these stencils are very nice quality. They're a nice weight. Um, there's our S. P. There's our N. And here's our I. Okay. All right, so spring has six letters. So three above our middle and three below. Now I can vaguely see where um, where my line was before. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. So I'm gonna use the sawmill gravy um, to, to do the stencil with and get my stencil brush out again. It's getting a workout tonight. If I can find it. There it is. I just want to get it cleaned off. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. This is kind of a long project, but we really got three projects done. Almost complete. All right, so again, with this kind of stencil, we're offloading most of the paint because we don't want it to bleed underneath. So I'm starting kind of in the middle with the eye just so I can space everything. Okay. So, well, I hope I have enough. Oh boy, I did that wrong. Yeah, I did that wrong. Um, <laughs> okay, because it's supposed to be S-P-R-I-N-G. The I was supposed to go below the line. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do another I, and then I'm going to dry that and then just paint over that real quick. No worries. I would do the R on top of it, but it would be um, off center. So S P. That's because I'm doing this sideways. S P R I N G. So let me finish this, and then I'll fix that little mistake. Move this up a little. I think a good good rule of thumb is for the top of the stencil to go right at the bottom of the letter. And you guys probably can't see that, but that makes sense to me. I can't really get the camera in closer unless I would do an overhead, and I didn't set up for that tonight. So, okay, G. <laughs> I have to think about this. These are just fitting. All right, let me, this is actually pretty dry, so I'm just going to um, get a brush out of here. Just a small brush and just kind of paint over it with the sunrise, morning sunrise. People worry about making mistakes when they paint. Don't worry, it is just paint and see how quick we're fixing this.
Okay, so S P R I N G. A little more paint on there. There's some really pretty, um, some writing stencils too, but I thought since I was going um, vertical that that wouldn't look as good, so. These are called farmhouse uh, letters, I think. Got some paint on there, and I'm going to get it on there. Oh yeah, we just made it space-wise with these letters. Okay, I'm totally off camera, I see. That's cute. Um, you know, I could just take this, tempted to take this and just kind of dry brush over those flowers, but I think I'm gonna wait. So, spring. I think I'm going to wait and use some white wax on these. I think that will be the ticket. I'll do it this way so you can see. I know it's awkward with the camera, but, um, but anyway, I think this is going to be a cute little, little front porch piece. And like I said, we're way over our hour. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. She said I did a fabulous job. That's a great compliment. <laughs> okay. Well, plan on doing, uh, you know, something similar pretty soon on a furniture piece. Uh, very similar color scheme. So, um, well, listen, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Tune in on Thursday. I'm either going to do... Um, some seeds and put them in my little greenhouse. Let me put you back up here. Uh oh. And sorry about my hand there. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm either going to do some seeds and put them in the greenhouse or I'm going to do a wall um, in my hall. A hall wall. <laughs> So that, and then Saturday, please make sure you check out the the dupe. That's a big deal. So um, another collaboration with my furniture flipping friends. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And also stay tuned uh, on our social media for the updates on these projects and also our announcement of where we're moving. All right. You guys have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye-bye.